sorry, Aram, I'll keep an eye on that. All right. Welcome, welcome everyone to the inaugural European Institute of Integrative Health Sciences Academic Senate. Now, what is a Senate and what is an academic Senate? What we thought we would do as a creative means was to create communities. Um, we believe at the Institute that healing communities, educating communities, teaching communities, and student communities are very valuable in building, growing, promoting our profession and healthcare and human kindness in general, philanthropy in general. So it, to that end, what we've done is we've created this event as a, uh, and there will be subsequent events and other activities involving the Academic Senate, as you'll see during this presentation, that will hopefully create um, a unified community across the globe. Uh, borders are disappearing, you know, countries are uh, merging, we are becoming one planetary society, and as such, we need to be connected. Our institute hosts students from all over the world. We have teachers from all over the world, and uh, I believe it is the precursor to creating a global community. So what we would like to do today is uh, go through, uh, first of all, welcomes from the WAND founders, uh, a brief message from each of the founders of the Institute to introduce you, to welcome you, and to give you their perspective on why we all believe that this institution, this uh, event, and our uh, vision and our goals and our plans for this, uh, uh, for this endeavor is going to succeed and is going to be a, uh, a standard setting uh, element, because there are a lot of uh, unique uh, things that we offer. We've changed uh, how education in our field is conducted and how we perceive this profession or education in general in healthcare is going to be changing. And then we'll talk a little bit about the Institute behind the idea behind right. it, evolution of medicine, uh, the future of medicine, as we see it, as the 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 evolving process of uh, medical care changes, and also uh, in, in line with that, the education evolution, how education itself is changing, and how that is uh, manifest in our institute, and how we've taken advantage of these evolutionary changes to create a unique educational institution to bring the next generation of healthcare practitioners into the field. Then we'll look at our program details, the specifics of our programs, how we tend to deliver it, what are the key components. We'll look at a, an actual four-year program, what the modules are and how they're offered, and how your participation as our educators uh, will be enriching that experience. And then we'll look at the specifics of the Senate, the activities, the roles, uh, the benefits of the Senate, the community activities, et cetera. And then lastly, we want to look at you, our educators, our golden asset, the world-class educators that are presented in this meeting, that are uh, attending this meeting. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the tools that we've made uh, available for all our educators. We want you to have the most uh, latest and the ease of use uh, tools to make your job easier in teaching and in conducting your lectures. And then we'll have a Q&A session uh, at the end uh, for open-ended questions. So welcome to the European Institute of Integrated Health Sciences, where we provide education for the next generation of healthcare practitioners. The co-founders, there are four of us. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of our backgrounds in detail, uh, but my personal message to you is, you know, my grandfather used to say, the day you stop learning something new, is the day you grow old. And it, that motto has been in my life, uh, all my life, and uh, I continue to strive to learn things uh, to, to improve my skills and knowledge. And I want to pass that passion, pass that uh, um, belief on to the next generation of healthcare practitioners. Amongst all of the founders, we have a, over 82 years of collective experience in TCIM, traditional complementary integrative medicine, and we all have seen the need for competency-based education, not how many hours of classes have you attended, but are you able to perform the key duties prescribed to an acupuncturist or to an herbalist? 
uh, the evolving practitioner, the change of the environment. Uh, you know, in the old days, you could set up shop and just do your own thing. Nowadays, it's more integrated. You're working in integrated settings, in hospitals, in clinics with other uh, practitioners and other professionals and understanding their language, being able to articulate with them, communicate with them, share with them is essential in uh, successfully implementing our medicine. Then, you know, we all understand the evolution of medicine and education and changes in student habits. You know, students are no longer um, the classic student of go sit room, sit in a classroom. Most of the students who are looking at careers, second careers most likely, are already burdened with other life challenges, families, work, uh, et cetera. And so they need to have flexibility in their educational programs. And then most importantly, the Institute strongly believes in giving back, in charity, in philanthropy. All of our activities involve some degree of philanthropic activities, whether it's charity clinics, whether it's community services, et cetera. And ultimately, all of it leading to a global community, a global community of healers, a global community of students and teachers. So what I'd like to do right now is pass the word on to the other founders, Allison, then Benjamin, and then we'll finish up with Georgette. Please, Allison, share your thoughts with the group, uh, welcome them and you know, invite them to learn about why you are here as a founder. Thank you, Aram, so much for that beautiful introduction. And thank you everyone for giving us your Saturday um, to, to come together and really to celebrate uh, this new beginning that we're embarking on, this new, this new frontier we're really embarking on. Um, I'm coming to this project uh, from the perspective of a patient. So I know really, really well how the nature of medicine really needs to change. Um, I'm originally from the United States where you know prescription medicine epidemics are are running rampant. Um, I was introduced to acupuncture as a as a pain um, relief modality. So we are at a time in in humanity really where we can no longer ignore um, aspects of our being, to, especially from from the emotional side, from stress regulation side. Um, and we need doctors that are that are looking at the whole instead of individual parts. And I know I'm I'm preaching to the choir here because you're all coming on this meeting. Um, you already have that understanding. Um, so for me, I'll be building out specifically the ethics program. In another life, I was a lawyer, so I'm intimately aware of of the issues that uh, we need to be focused on uh, for our practitioners to have high moral standards and, and ethical um, practices. Um, and I will also be building out the healing energetics pillar. Uh, and my vision for that specific pillar is really to give people a foundational basis of um, not so much uh, teaching already existing modalities, but, but really what are the concepts, um, what are the, the fundamental systems that people need to be learning about um, communication is a huge thing for me. How do we language um, what is happening in the body, what is happening in the energetic system so that we create uh, motivation and incentives in our patients to, um, to look at themselves in a different way and, and, and treat themselves with more love and compassion. So I love, uh, I, I love being together in, in this venture and I really look forward to co-creating something spectacular with you all. Thank you, Allison. Uh, Benjamin. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, I think I've seen a few of you already in, in sort of one-to-one -one calls. So thank you for coming. And again, thank you for coming on a Saturday. I know that uh, some people might be on the other side of the world practicing or having a clinic, or it might be late in, in your time zone. So for me, just a little bit of background. I'm probably the only one that's actually from Europe in comparison to the three other Americans. So. <laughs> I know a little bit about the, the landscape here. You've got a problem with Americans. <laughs> <laughs> so I so I have studied in the UK. Uh, I come from a traditional stems and branches for those that might know it. Uh, I'm an acupuncturist, not a herbalist. And that's exactly where I'll be most of my focus. I mean, in teaching, uh, clinic, 
Uh, we do a lot of um, community service, especially in Greece here, where we have a lot of um, issues, let's say, with uh, with people uh, coming to the country and not um, and being refugees and all that. So we work quite closely with those communities and helping women uh, a lot. Also, uh, we've got clinics where it's only for women uh, for trauma and all that. So these are things that we I really want to give back to the community and really help. That's some of my passionate my passions for for the vision and all that, and seeing also the 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 community of acupuncture growing in Europe because I think that in comparison to other continents, Europe is a bit behind, and this is where a lot of the of this school stems from is catching up, wanting to uh, bring the profession to the people much more today. I also work uh, for the for the European Association. Uh, I'm very involved in the education part, so this is something that I want to also uh, change the the landscape. As for what I'll be doing in the school, you'll be mostly seeing me probably in administration. I have worked uh, for a school previously. I was uh, dealing with the day to day business, practically everything that was done in the school, whether that's planning to, with students and all that. That was my job and I will be continuing this so I will be communicating directly with all of you and with students I'll be the link between the two very often with my team uh, in the administration with Armine and Jacqueline that you'll also see uh, they are also present and you'll also be communicating a lot with. That is me in a nutshell uh, again thank you very much and thank you for for everything. Thank you Benjamin. Miss Georgette, Dr. Georgette, go ahead. <laughs> okay, good evening, everyone. Um, and excuse me, I'm actually in the village. I, I am an American uh, living in Athens. My husband is Greek, so it's not negotiable to live back at home in my uh, home state of California in San Diego. Uh, we are at the village house right now, and I have a balcony full of farm animals. <laughs> the lights are on, and they think it's time to talk. <laughs> So um, anyway, as Dr. Uh, Aram has mentioned, uh, we are standing on the edge of a new era in education. And for me, it's it's very personal because I considered myself a late bloomer. I didn't start university until I was 30. And I, at that time, I was a, a new mother and a new wife. And I didn't think that it was possible for me to obtain an education until I learned about the concept of university without walls. Well, then it's a, actually a very old concept, but then we didn't have the technology that we have now. So I really believe that the zeitgeist is working for us. We have the technology and we have the systems in place. And I want to welcome you to our community. Uh, I have a great team here and um, we want you to be part of the community. And we're more than just four founders. You know, you will be part of our governance. You will also be part of our decision-making factors. And you will have a voice in the direction that we choose to go. So it's, you know, if you're looking at like an employer-employee relationship, that's not us. We're looking, like Aram said, to build community, um, and as an American living in Europe, uh, I've made huge professional sacrifices, as you know, many of my California colleagues are, are on board here this evening. And, you know, I come from a state where my profession is highly respected, we're considered primary care physicians. And moving, having to move to Europe was um, a sobering experience. So uh, why am I here? Um, I'm on a mission to preserve and protect um, our heritage medicine. And uh, I think, I think this, these are great beginnings. So I'm really excited to have you on board. Uh, that's about all I have to say right now before the tribe of animals start piping in at the same time. So I'm going to mute myself and, and thank you again and, and welcome. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you very much for uh, chiming in. Uh, now, in addition to the four that you see, the real heartbeat of this entity lies in these two individuals. You know, these are the the the, the blood and uh, the vascular system and the nervous system of this organization. We can't do anything without the support of these two individuals. These are the golden standard for our operations. They're part of uh, Benjamin's team. 
Jacqueline Palmieri, uh, who is our secretariat. She has a master's in marketing, bachelor's in arts, project management, uh, student administration, operations and finance. And Arminet Saturian, who is an administer admissions manager, master's in linguistics, in hospitality, and is currently working on master's in business management. She's our student administrator and project manager as well. So these two individuals will be involved intimately with you in your day-to-day -day operations, in setting up your trainings, if you need uh, um, the train, uh, uh, training in one of the tools that, we've, uh, that we're gonna discuss later, or if you have questions about your payments or about your uh, uploads of your videos or whatever, as an instructor, learn these two individuals. Take care of them and they'll take care of you. So, uh, you know, they're here now. So I'll ask them to just wave and introduce themselves very briefly. And uh, we'll go from there. Great. Now, education, it is evolving. And let's take a look at how it's evolving, why it's evolving, and where is it going? You know, there is uh, two really cool old sayings. One of them says, the only person that actually enjoys... Uh, I think you're muted. Your microphone is off. No, it's not. I'm not mute. Are you? Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Okay. I don't know why you're saying you're muted. Everyone can hear me, right? Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Um, we can't uh, hear ben, you. I think you have problems with your uh, with your uh, mic. Is everybody yes, having ben, the same I, can, issue? I can hear Aram. I can hear you just fine. Yes. Thank you. Um, so the only person that actually enjoys and likes change is a wet baby. That's one of the most common, commonly used sayings. And the second saying is the, the only constant in the universe is change. So having looked at these two elements, change is inevitable. We go through life and it changes. We go through every day and we experience change. How we react to change and how we can take advantage of that change will determine our future and our goal, growth. So what is occurring in the education market today, in the education evolution? Now, one big element, I think Georgette alluded to the universities without walls before, and that concept has always been there, uh, but the technology and the, the mandate lacked. And lo and behold, out comes this thing called COVID, right? Which literally mandates, forces everyone to stay home. And as a result, businesses and schools and education, they start adapting these technologies. In fact, what we're on right now, Zoom, became a business, a valuable business as a result of COVID. It was COVID that made Zoom a valuable stock item. Before that, it was nothing. So technology evolved to adapt to the change needed. Now, evolution of education has changed as well. As a result of that, and in combination with that. The classic version 1.0 education was dealing with someone sitting in a classroom and then a teacher on the whiteboard doing these lectures or reading from the manual. And you could spend a couple, three hours in that room, fall asleep half the time, and then try to go home and recall what you could take away from that lecture. That's the classic classroom module, uh, model of learning. And then version two came in where it was, okay, we can do the same thing through Zoom. Everybody joins in the Zoom, logs in, and just like we're doing here, I'm talking, you're listening. Well, you know, that has its own negative elements as well. Version three is coming, it's here now, and it involves evolutionary changes in technology that engages the participant, that changes the paradigm with which a student participates. No longer are they just sitting there and listening to a lecture, they're actively participating in the classes, actively participating in their own education, flexibly enough to their own liking, to their own style, and to their own timing. So that is the evolution of education. And we'll look at some of the key components that are taking place and how we've implemented these changes in our programs to deliver the new education to our students. Medicine is evolving as well. You know, as I said earlier, the practitioners that graduated, you know, when, when I graduated, which is I'm 10 years ago, I'm not going to say exactly when, years ago, uh, you know, you, you grabbed your diploma, you 
hang your shingle, you open your door and say, okay, I'm a practitioner of traditional Chinese medicine. Come and I'll stick needles in you and prescribe herbs to you. Um, nowadays, most of our graduates are expected to be working in rehabilitation centers, in integrated clinics, even in hospitals. I have practitioners and graduating students who are working in gynecology wards doing anesthesia, acupuncture anesthesia for OBG cases and surgery. So the evolution of medicine is demanding that our students are not just educated in traditional Chinese medicine or traditional complementary medicine or acupuncture or energetics, but also in biomedical sciences, Western sciences, concepts within the physical nature of the, the, the physical universe. And all of this is rapidly pushing towards the singularity where technology will be reaching a certain point where all of these elements will be just like the switch. You know, back when uh, light was invented, when electricity one was invented, before that, you had candles that you had to light your house with. Nowadays, the switch on the wall is expected. It's not a luxury. When you turn it on, you expect the lights to come on. It is a convenience. It is part of your daily activities. And that singularity will become rapidly the daily activities of your life. And we need to know how that's being done. Now, classically, this is how in the past education was delivered. I call it the hammer and the nail. So we hammer in the nail, right? What happens? Most students often felt overwhelmed, a lot of information, too much, too fast. And they were then finding themselves focusing on memorization. What was that thing and that thing and that thing and then it's, and, and preparation for exams. As soon as the exam was done, most of the information just poof, gone. There's no time and opportunity to build core competencies. And that has changed. The classic model doesn't work anymore. The new model is personalized instruction. The future is guiding hands. The ability to integrate, to work with the student individually, personalized, and provide a learning and growth experience for that student that is meaningful to them, that is personal to them. And this is how you engage a student in learning, not memorizing, in building core competencies and not just preparing for an exam. As I said, what this does is it allows the institution to create experiences of learning according to students' personal styles. Uh, some people work better at night, some people work better in the morning. You have an early morning lecture, you know, if somebody has a late night shift working till midnight, they're not going to be there. They're not going to be able to assimilate the information that's needed. Focus on assimilation. And you'll see how that why that is important. Many opportunities for reinforcement of this. And we'll discuss some of those opportunities and some of those techniques that we use for that. Integrated learning, right? But that is ingrained into the individual, which creates many moments of eureka. The concept of eureka moments is uh, literally a neurological bridging that occurs in the mind that says, oh, so this is what that meant. It's making new neuronal connections in the mind that are solid, unbreakable, long-term, ingrained memory. And this is what we want our students to experience. When they look at a Western concept or a allopathic concept and then compare it to a TCM concept and then arrive at a eureka moment, that is a uh, enlightening moment for them that is far beyond just didactic learning. And ultimately, all of this will allow them to create core competencies. So how do we do this? How do we achieve this? By creating a hybrid blended learning environment. This is where we are. A learning environment is defined as a carefully curated collection of materials, activities intended to support development of core competencies. How we do this is through various mechanisms. Learning outcomes can be improved over individual delivery method, some people prefer face-to-face, -face. some people prefer uh, um, uh, observing and learning on their own time at their own pace. Others prefer group activities. 
All of these mechanisms, all of these techniques are available in a hybrid blended learning environment, and every student will have an opportunity to participate in this personalized, empowering situation. So how we use this? By creating core competencies through the blended learning model with station rotation models, lab rotation models, which we'll discuss if we're doing herbal labs or clinic lab rotations. Flipped classrooms are key component of our educational model. In fact, most of the lectures that you as instructors will be conducting will be flipped classrooms. You will have, or your, your students will have already studied your materials in pre-recorded videos, and they will be ready to attend your lecture. So when they come into that one hour or two hour lecture, they already have done their study. And it is your then, then, then objective and your goal to guide, assimilate, consolidate that information in the student's body through co collective group activities, through flipped classrooms where teachers, uh, where students teach and you guide them in terms of their understanding of how they're presenting the material, et cetera, et cetera. So these are very important tools that we've implemented in a classroom setting. Don't take our word for it. A lot of the research out there already is demonstrating the, the empowerment of flipped classrooms or uh, hybrid learning models or use of uh, integrated technologies that and the, the percentage of improvement that they see in both student participation, student activity, teacher e effectiveness and engagement, and also ease of use for the teachers. You know, we've all lectures here. We know that when you're sitting there and you got a four hour lecture to do, by the time you get home, your throat is gone, you're drained of lung chi, there's nothing left. You know, and, and the reward isn't as much, but when you engage with your students in a collective way where they have already done your pre-assigned work, they've already watched your lectures, they're ready to discuss in, in an articulate, in an intelligent way, that creates a much better environment for you as a professor, as a, student, as a lecturer as well. So the three steps for creating these core competencies that we envision are assimilation or acquisition of knowledge, and we'll look at how we're going to deliver acquisition of knowledge. Once you acquire knowledge, you need to assimilate it because the acquisition gives you the fundamental knowledge. You need to build skills around that. And that assimilation of that knowledge, internalization of that knowledge, will provide you with the ability and the core skills to then do the work. And then ultimately, reinforcement opportunities, constant reinforcement opportunities through variety and flavor, diversified repetition, and unique feedback mechanisms will allow our students to take all of these acquired knowledge and turn it into reinforced core competencies. Whatever field they choose, whatever pillar they decide to do, yeah, you know, uh, uh, acupuncture, herbal medicine, or phytotherapy, as we call it, uh, and uh, or energy medicine or manual therapies. So the learning objectives, there are four key learning objectives. Transfer of knowledge. How we do the transfer of knowledge? We're primarily focusing on didactic lectures of asynchronous and synchronous mix. The asynchronous lectures about each of our module, you'll see this later on, will have a component part that is pre-delivered, pre-recorded videos. That's it. It may be you discussing the material. It may be something else that you've identified as important for them to learn. You create a video learning guide that is uploaded into the directory and into the virtual library. This virtual library then becomes available to the student. And what's important is they cannot just willy nilly watch videos. They have to go through a process of observing each assigned video, stopping it at a certain point, the video pauses and gives them quizzes and exams. If they do not pass those exams, they have to review the material before they can move on. So it's not just here's a bunch of YouTube channels, go watch them and then come back because you know what happens. Half of them won't be watched. But this is a guided, interactive, and engaging model for our students that, they re that requires them to actively engage with these video libraries. Then we have scheduled online lectures. These are the uh, uh, flipped classrooms. We have a large e-library, e-reading e-library. Uh, all of our journals, research libraries uh, are available to them as well. So all of these will provide the transfer of knowledge. Now, in addition, you have the application of knowledge or the, the building of the skills, right? This is done through role-playing, simulations, and group activities. 
we have intensives, one month, twice a year intensives in Greece, where all our students are required to attend. And during this time, they will have opportunities to conduct role-playing activities, simulations, whether it's actual cadaver work, whether it's body point palpations or herb lab observations or virtual anatomy uh, simulations, et cetera, et cetera. And then group activities. We have PPDs, personal professional development, group activities guided by our teachers and our instructors, which allows them to participate in group collective learning. Whether it's a project that they have to put together to, let's say one of our PPD programs, for example, is putting together a local show or a local seminar for the local community on what is acupuncture and how does it benefit the community. So they have to prepare and learn the material, put together a research material, put together the, the presentations, invite speakers, arrange the venue. Of course, the Institute is always at their side, assisting them, supporting them in these efforts. But this is part of their growth and development in terms of group activities. Then you have assessment of knowledge. As I said, the assessment of knowledge is clinically, you know, classically assessment was done through multiple choice or true false question. I don't believe in multiple choice questions and true false questions. They're great for quizzes. They're great for integrated videos. You know, you put them inside a video, they watch a 10 minute video, and then they have to answer a bunch of multiple choice questions related to topics that they were just watching. Those are great. As a midterm and final exams, as core competency exams, the best way to assess an individual's core competencies is oral and practical. That's it. So our midterms and, and finals are going to include oral and uh, presentations, oral discussions and oral dissertations, and also their practical component. I remember when I was going through medical school, my final, my graduation final, was literally walking into a room, sitting in front of a, 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 a exam board, picking a paper out of the basket, looking at the topic on it, and then give it, you know having 10 minute time to prepare, and then make presentation about the topic, and then answer questions from the uh, exam board. This is how you assess a, a, a true skill set and understanding of the competency. And in practical settings, you know, in observing them, how they can treat a patient, how they can do an intake properly, guide an entire cycle from a patient coming in to all the way at the end where you now are prescribing them the self-care, home care, nutritional elements, et cetera, follow-ups and also referrals. So these are all elements that are going to be part of our uh, uh, assessment element of our knowledge. And then last but not least, ability to perform and provide ongoing support. You'll see in our clinic settings, in our clinical opportunities, the many avenues we've created for our students to have hands-on real world experiences. The challenge when you go into a virtual teaching environment is the absence of hands-on. And that is why we've created an additional concept, an additional we've really focused on providing add-on uh, uh, real-world hands-on opportunities for our students so they don't lack that. Because you can go spend right now, you know, uh, 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 X hours online watching videos, take a certificate. That doesn't prepare you for real world. Right? So our programs, we have a four-year bachelor program and a five-year master's program. And as you can see, hour-wise, in terms of breaking it down into the total hours, we're competent and uh, um, meet and actually exceed the European standard and the, the NCCOM standard for the education for the bachelor's and master's level in, uh, in traditional Chinese medicine and traditional medicine. And these are based on core competencies. Again, all of them are cross-breeded. So your biomedical sciences, everyone, doesn't matter which pillar your own, which specialty you're studying, you're going to require biomedical sciences, traditional Chinese medicine, foundational knowledge, safety and ethics knowledge, and whatever the core specialty you have chosen. So these four elements will comprise a graduate at the four-year level or at the five-year level of their specialty, given all of these integrated medical disciplines. For biomedicine, for example, we are covering topics from anatomy, pathology, pharmacology, radiology, pa uh, psychology, neuroscience, research. All of our uh, graduates uh, are required to conduct research and submit a capstone project at upon graduation. Therefore, they are evidence-based educated. They know how to take a research material and apply it in clinical setting. 
they know how to find research that applies to their clinics, that they, that they can be applied in real world settings. Practice and health, health uh, ethics and, and, and practice management. This is a key component. You know, a lot of graduates, a lot of schools focus very little on, okay, I'm done, I graduate, how do I go into business? How do I make this work? That is one of the reasons why in the US, especially in the US, a big percentage of graduates drop out within one or two years and change their careers, go back to either their previous life or do something else entirely. That is because they're not given the tools to properly set up, operate, manage, and run their business both ethically and efficacy, effectively. So we will be covering all of these elements, patient ethics, professional ethics, laws and regulations, practice management, business development. How do you network? How do you find other uh, um, uh, professionals out there that you can co uh, collaborate with, that you can refer with, co-refer, et cetera, et cetera. Understanding of the TCM core competencies, you know, all of the TCM theoretics, acupuncture, herbology, diagnostics, therapeutics, chi energetics, the, even the traditional uh, Taoist philosophy that is at the root of our uh, TCM medicine. Understanding the pillars, you know, understanding the specialties. Are you going to be an acupuncture specialist only? Are you focusing on phytotherapy? Are you doing manual therapy? Are you focusing on herbal energetics or a combination therein? of multiples. And each of these have very specific core competencies that the student will be held accountable to. And I'm glad to announce that coming spring of 2024, the Institute will be also offering a four-year, one of the first and only four-year recognized programs for Ayurvedic medicine. This is a unique program that will be coming from the, uh, from the European Institute. And it is um, about time, I believe, because the World Health Organization concluded that after the TCIM-1, which was traditional Chinese medicine and acupuncture, TCIM-2, traditional complementary integrated medicine 2, in the world is Ayurveda. And Ayurveda has been practiced just about as long as, as TCM and is very, very potent in its own way, in its own right, in providing healing for large, vast communities out there. So having a program available that is uh, accredited, that is approved, that has uh, uh, the number of hours that are required for a bachelor level education in Ayurveda is very potent. Now, real world opportunities. You've learned a didactic, you've gone through, our students have learned all that stuff. Now they're ready to practice. What is it that we're doing for them? The two months that I mentioned in uh, Greece, they're gonna be either in Athens, Tinos, or um, um, uh, Thessaloniki. These are we have established clinics in these three areas where our students will be collaborating and working together in retreat centers uh, through both didactic, practical lectures, participating in hands-on activities, and also clinic observation and/or clinic practice hours. We have a uh, through the use of technology, we can do virtual observation opportunities. I have several virtual observers already in my clinic. Um, the technology exists now. I've seen surgeries being conducted with virtual observation. You know, you may remember in the old days, the theater, the surgical theater, where a bunch of uh, uh, MD wannabes would sit on top, look down a window, and down below there was a surgeon performing surgery. Well, the concept is the same, just borderless with technology. The opportunity now to observe an instructor and or a practitioner performing intakes and performing acupuncture therapies through uh, a virtual uh, cloud-based uh, computing is present and we will be integrating that as part of our virtual observation opportunities. Personalized mentorship. All of you, I urge you, you know, as you engage with your students, provide them with the opportunity for personalized mentorship. That will enhance your abilities because you're gaining basically labor to assist you with, to work with you with, and also remember, Knowledge is not ours to hoard. Knowledge is the universe's. And the more we pass that knowledge on to the next generation, the more effective we are in guiding the next evolution of medicine. Now we come to exploratory externships. I mentioned the importance of philanthropy. Through the relationships that we've established across the globe, we have very unique, probably exclusively unique opportunities through the Institute for our graduates and our students to have real world hands-on experience 
in rural areas, in off the beaten path hospitals, clinics around the world with real world cases. I had a group in Nepal last year that uh, experienced, uh, I think to summarize their words were it was life altering for them. We have Nepal, we have Zanzibar, Morocco, Jaipur, India, South, uh, South America. These are integrated hospital settings, clinical settings where our students can spend up to a month engaged in acupuncture or herbology uh, practices under supervision and working in integrated clinics. The um, Nepal group had an opportunity in less than 40 days to see 1,500 patients, 1,500 patients of diverse complex cases. And we also, as I mentioned, have exchange opportunities that were set up with both US institutions and also in China that will allow our students to have further growth in, our, in their education and also in their uh, um, practical components as well. So that is the gist. Now, our program is delivered modularly. Each module, there's, there's eight semesters in a four-year program, so three months each. We, we're doing spring and uh, uh, fall. We're not doing summer semesters. Some institutions will do summer semesters as well. Because we're online, we may as well consider that. I haven't, we haven't decided yet that, but it can drastically reduce the time uh, that uh, um, a student uh, has to engage in, in education. So that's something that we're reviewing because the, the way we are delivering education, we don't necessarily need a summer vacation. Uh, so there are three months in the summer that we could add as a third semester drastically reducing the time. But right now, for the moment, we have eight semesters, two to three modules per semester, uh, per month. So you have each module about 20 to 25 credit hours. These are actual didactic credit hours, which equals to about one ECTS, the uh, credit transfer system. Modules are crossover. If you're taking, if you're in the herbal or phytotherapy pillar, you still need to take all of the biomedical sciences. If you're in the acupuncture pillar, you need to take all the biomedical pillars, biomedical competencies. So these modules, you will have classes and students intermingling. And I love that. That's a concept that allows them to cross over, cross bridge and cross share and learn from each other as well. They are color coded. So we have a program which you'll see in a minute that describes a four year program for each student that they know. Uh, September, come September, October, when their classes start, these, these, these are the modules that they're going to take. And each module consists of 10 to 20 hours of asynchronous study, which is primarily reading pre-recorded instruction by from the professor. So if you're a professor who teaching, for example, uh, uh, introduction to acupuncture, you'll put together about 10 hours of uh, video that you will self-record using uh, the, the engine of the systems that will provide you and you will be able to offer them and link them completely in a secure environment to watch only. They cannot download, they cannot copy, they cannot do anything to that video. That is strictly a protected content that is only available to them for view and active participation, that's it. You can quiz through them, et cetera. And then you conduct four to five hours of synchronous study through the flipped classroom. So once a week after they've had, let's say four hours of watching one video, they'll be able to come into a flipped classroom where it's live lecture, where you're actually teaching, where you're actually engaged with them and say, okay, I'm gonna ask you about the history of TCM, X, Y, Z, tell me about this era or ABC, discuss this era. So you're literally conducting an interactive process where these students can then participate in learning each other from each other. Right. Then, as I said, we have the intensives, which offer the practical component and the hands-on, and uh, the, the uh, eventually, as well as the midterm and final examination. So when we look at this program across the board, you can hear this is a four-year acupuncture specialty program for 2003 cohort. This is year one and two. So year one, September uh, semester one, all our students in the acupuncture cohort will be required in September, October to take medical history, TCM history, and begin their PPD project, their personal professional development project. These are group activities where they will prepare materials or, or some work that will enhance and in, improve their skills. Next month, they're doing three modules, TT, uh, medical terminology, 
TCM terminology and intro to acupuncture. Then they'll move on to AMP1, this is anatomy and physiology one, TCM theory one, and then in December, January, they'll take their ethics module and channel theory one. And then they will spend a month in practicum where they have the opportunity to do a lot of hands-on, a lot of work, group work, uh, a lot of uh, role-playing activities, et cetera. To, then they move on to their year one, semester two. And you can see the progression. I'm not gonna go through each of these boxes, but each of these color-coded modules represent 20 to 25 hours of uh, total class, out of which 10 to 20 hours are actual pre-recorded videos and a four to five hours of actual professor lecturing, uh, doing online uh, meetings or uh, flipped classrooms. So you can see the progression as it moves forward into year three and year four. It gets complicated, it gets more in, uh, involved. We have psychology in, in the blue column. We have blood studies and pathology one, pathology two, radiology. We're exposing our students to radiology. I, I've seen too many acupuncturists uh, who sit there with a patient and the patient brings them a, a, an x-ray and, and they're, they're looking at it upside down. It's embarrassing, sorry. Um, capstone summative and then their physical medicine and rehab courses. And likewise, they'll be doing pediatrics and obstetrics, gynecology, all of these in the uh, traditional uh, Chinese uh, medicine theoretics. And then for acupuncture, they'll be exposed to a variety of unique techniques, neuroacupuncture, acupuncture orthopedics, uh, tongue, acupuncture, LAT and LLLT, electro and acupuncture uh, orthopedics as well. So these are the way that we're delivering these modules. And how this will work is that each of you as participants, we have a list of, we have most of, a lot of the videos we already have and we have professors who are doing the work, but you as contributing professors will be doing a lot of this work as well. So we will have at the end, I have a slide that basically talks about what we're looking at for year one, semester one right here in terms of who, you know, in terms of the subjects or the matter or the modules that we're looking for uh, uh, for our instructors to begin constructing for us. Now let's talk about you. We have a very diverse and very, I'm proud of our educators. This is a unique world-class educators list. I mean, we have people from all over the world and with really, really unique skill sets. You know, you've met already uh, Allison, Georgette, and Benjamin. Um, Dr. Yuang Li is one of my old teachers, and I have the utmost respect for her because I think she instilled in me the ability to go beyond just herbal formulations, is to see how you can create your own custom formulations. And uh, yeah, she's, uh, she's not she's here, <clears throat> but participating uh, uh, through a proxy right now. Uh, Tiago is an excellent participant and teacher in biomedical sciences. He's a, a RNP nurse practitioner and also a TCM practitioner. So he understands the merging of the two sciences, the, the blending of the two languages. Dr. Dino, you know, a uh, chiropractor in orthopedics. Uh, Dr. Julia Bashi, I mean, uh, what else can I say? Dr. Julia uh, is probably one of the most prominent, if not the prominent, translators of the classics. You want to know anything that's been written in the classics and you want to know the real meaning behind it? You ask Dr. Bashi. You know, she'll tell you what it really means and how it translates. So I would love for her to be able to expand that knowledge and translate that knowledge and give it as even even as rudimentary elements as TCM terminology. You know, it's not just gan, pi, shui, yu. It's not just the words. It's what lies beyond the concepts. And I think uh, she'll be able to do a lot of really good work with that. Dr. Ming Dong Lee is one of my most uh, esteemed teachers from the United States, as well as uh, Lawrence Lau, Dr. Lau. Um, they have both have been very instrumental in both acupuncture, Twina. Dr. Ming Dong Lee, by the way, have, probably holds one of the highest number of gold medals in martial arts at his age. He is a fan form Tai Chi instructor, um, Yang style Tai Chi and Qigong instructor, and he practices medical Qigong as well. Alexa, who has a very unique opportunities and very unique ways of creating unique businesses around the acupuncture. I mean, she revolutionized community acupuncture. And she is probably the preeminent 
community acupuncturist in all of US. She's able to deliver multiple sessions in one room to multiple patients without loss of efficacy or without loss of patient confidentiality. This is powerful and she'll be able to teach us. Uh, Elizabeth Patignotti, one of our local, she is an exceptional understand. She has an exceptional understanding in the psychology and the and the the uh, uh, psychology psychological aspect of health and how it plays a role in in the human uh, behavior and also how you can change the psychology through behavior, not just the other way around. Uh, Dr. Anna Sukasian, uh, preeminent epidemiologist from Armenia, she's. Uh, probably going to be instrumental in educating us and preparing our students in, in what happens in large scale epidemics, pandemics, understanding what, how does a disease progress and what you as a practitioner need to be aware of. I mean, we're living in the world of COVID right now. And, you know, we don't know what the next big thing is coming and understanding how that impacts the uh, global environment and the community and the health uh, systems is very important. Yorgos, um, is an excellent acupuncturist from the US and is uh, going to be instrumental in providing a lot of the hands-on and the theoretics and the, and the different types and modalities of acupuncture techniques. Dr. Atsuki, uh, you know, uh, from Japan, uh, utmost respect for Dr. Atsuki. Not only does he have the Japanese acupuncture techniques down, but he also understands shiatsu and the energetics components. So I'm really looking forward to 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 exposing his uh, our students to his uh, unique skill set. Uh, Dimitri uh, from uh, our uh, neighborhood, I think from Cyprus, uh, uh, probably the only certified neuroacupuncturist in uh, in this neck of the woods, and so he will be carrying a lot of that uh, educational standard forward for our students on. What is the next evolution of acupuncture? It's not just taking needles, it's understanding the underlying anatomical concepts of neuro uh, pathways and, and how the neuromuscular junctions work and neuroacupuncture in general. And then we have our um, uh, energetics model, you know, Anne Marie, um, Carol Robertson, and uh, Madalena Petre. These are powerful, powerful personas in energetic healing, in healing energetics, in understanding the various modalities of. Of the, of the body's energy elements. Um, I'm not the expert in that field, so I don't want to butcher their contribution to that field, but um, from what I understand, each one of them is preeminent and a major contributor to this field. So again, our instructors, our educators, you are world-class. Be proud, you know, I am very proud of you. So I am ecstatic about the opportunity to work with you and grow a true global community around the world. So what we've done is we've created some really cool tools and unique uh, um, mechanisms for you to do your job easier. Remember, we're in a hybrid blended setup. Therefore, you don't need to worry about conducting five hour lectures every week. I just need you to take the time at your own leisure, whenever you can, go through our unique tool set that we've created, which is Ed Puzzle, which is a unique setting that is a library of all of our videos, exclusive and secured and protected and backed up that allows you to basically either upload existing videos that you have or create through a single button. You click, you literally, all of our instructors will have log into it. You log into your own profile. You have full access to it, full rights to it. It's your secure. You click on a button and you record your video. You put it in your own library there and you share it for viewing through EIHS. Very important to understand that IP is maintained by you. We do not take over your IP. A lot of institutions out there say, well, you created this slide or you created this presentation for us, therefore this is our IP. No, this is your IP, you're the instructor. You've taken the time to put this together. You've taken the, the passion to tell the story. All I'm asking as EIHS is a non-exclusive right to use that information, to use that knowledge to teach the next generation of healthcare practitioners. You can do whatever you want with that video. You wanna take it and go put on somewhere else and, and use that same material at, at another place. I can't tell you not to. Next, we have other tools, Osmosis, Screencastify. We'll discuss these in greater detail as they come up later on when we're beginning the, our, our actual teaching processes. But they're all tools that are available for you as teachers to make your job easier. 
We will have a demo scheduled for all of you that are going to be participating and actually putting together lectures and teaching for this coming cohort. And when that happens, you will go through a brief training manual, a training uh, 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 class on how to do the head puzzle. Very easy. I've done it, and it's it's simple. Literally, you log in, you click a button, you begin, you create your slides, whatever. You can put it on your computer. You can keep it in your Google Drive. You share your screen. You start presenting. You finish the presentation, keeping it short. I don't like 10, 20-hour videos, right? You want to keep them about 30, 40 minutes per, per video. You upload it and you press a button and say, okay, create quizzes from this. We have an AI-based system that will look at the video and just say, okay, at this point, I'm going to insert this question. Are these answers right? You can approve them or you can change them the way you like it. And you say, okay, go ahead. Once you have that program set up, you can then assign it to your classroom. It automatically sends the link to the video, not the video, the link to a view-only video to the classroom, Google Classroom, to which these students are assigned to. And they'll get notified, okay, you have a new assignment, go watch this 10-hour block of videos on, I don't know, TCM terminology, right? And then you can go watch those videos, go through the quizzes. What's nice about this is it gives you as an instructor and us as an institute to also do back-end analysis. Who's watching these videos? Who's participating? What do the quiz exam uh, uh, look like? What, are, are they passing? Are they failing? Each of the individual students. And all of those grades get transferred into Classroom, Google Classroom, so that they're automatically, their grades are done by the end they're finished. None of this, I have to put together a 100-question exam or a 10-question quiz every after every lecture. I got to dig up questions and put them out and administer it, and then I got to score them and then put the score into the thing. We don't need you to do that. You're a teacher. You're a storyteller. That's what I want you to focus on. Compelling, powerful messages in beautiful videos and in personal live uh, meetings with your students. The rest of the stuff will be taken care of by the technology. And last but not least, today, exclusively, announcing Chibo. Does anyone know what Chibo is? Who is Chibo? Can anyone say who Chibo is? The classics, come on. The TCM, the TCM professionals. Come on, Brian or uh, Giorgio, Dimitri, come on. Who was Chibo from the classics? Julia, Chibo. He was, uh, he was the Yellow Emperor's teacher. Yes. He was the personal physician to the Yellow Emperor. And I would like to introduce Chibo to you right now. We have created an artificial intelligence-based TCM tutor specifically for our instructors and for our students. It has been trained on all of the TCM classics that have been so far translated, and it has been trained on all of the modern textbooks of TCM. You can ask them questions, and it will give you answers only limited to those texts, not just some general uh, fantasy answers. And it will also give you references and confidence factors, as you'll witness now. first inaugural launch and preview of an innovative, unique tool exclusively available from the European Institute of Integrative Health Sciences and exclusively for our students and our instructors. We announced today the launch of an innovative artificial intelligence-based interactive personalized tutor we affectionately named our tutor Chibo. And you may recall Chibo, he was the personal physician to Wang Di and was able to answer all things related to TCM. This tool is a unique tool that will evolutionize the education, the blended 
hybrid learning model that our institute employs and will offer tools and uh, resources for our students to learn in a personalized way, in an interactive way, and uh, hone their skills and even test their knowledge in all things TCM. What the Chibo is, is a large language model, LLM, which is a chat GPT-like uh, library that has the ability to parse through a large set of data and present answers based on confidence factors. What we've done is we've created a unique learning model for Chibo using all of the ancient translated texts from classics to all of the modern textbooks that are used in all of the institutions that teach TCM and traditional Chinese medical terminology, theoretics, uh, therapeutics, and modalities. So for example, I can ask as a student or as an instructor, Chibo, to tell me, tell me about the differential diagnosis of night sweats. Now, we have provided Chibo with a, an extensive library of uh, texts as I mentioned earlier, and Chibo will be able to draw its answers from the various sources and present the, uh, the answers to my question. And in many cases, it will also cite the, uh, the, uh, the text where it obtained the answer. What's nice about that is I can then check the source and view my confidence factor. I am confident 86% that this answer is correct and it will also show me where it got the answers from in this case the essentials of chinese medicine volume three so you can see for example here it gives me a very concise answer of the night sweats and how they could occur and what are the differential diagnostic elements i can further ask questions with regards to verbs for example chibo tell me the herbs used in wind cold conditions and again it will draw its answers from the textbooks and the classic texts as well and will be able to provide me with a cited source uh, in this case uh, it'll give me both the pinyin names and also the uh, uh, latin pronunciations and also provide me with a source in this case, Essentials of Chinese Medicine, Volume 2, uh, with an 87% confidence factor. I can ask Chibo theoretical questions, uh, relationship between the San Zhao and Yuan Qi. Again, with appropriate sources, it gives me the relationship between Sanjiao and Yuan Qi, closely related concepts, and variety of sources from different sources as it draws the context, and it will show me the sources and the variety of confidence factors, 88% from Essentials of Chinese Medicine, there's an additional source citing for it. So I am, as a student, honing my skills by testing my knowledge, by concerning uh, any topic uh, related to TCM. And what's nice about this is the entire conversation is saved so I can download this conversation and use it as a self-taught learning model. The tool, the personalized tutor, Chibo, will be launched exclusively from the EIHS for our fall 2023 cohort. And uh, we releasing revision one today. However, revision two is also slated to include verbal interaction, which will even further uh, improve the personal nature of the interaction with Chibo and provide an enhanced learning uh, method for our students. Thank you. 
So the concept, it's very important to, 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 to summarize uh, the concept of Chibo. The idea isn't to replace teachers or to replace uh, lectures. The idea is to provide tools for them to test their knowledge, to hone their skills, even us as instructors. I may be able to be in a situation where I have to look up something and I have a huge library. By the time I get through it, it's going to take me an hour to really find that specific citing or that specific text that I remember I had read somewhere in one of the classics. I can ask my assistant, I can ask Chibo to tell me about it very specifically and it will cite it immediately. So that is the value that it brings to our professors and to our instructors and also to our students. The ability, you know, when they're watching their videos, they see a concept that doesn't make sense or maybe they're not clear, they can jump into Chibo. Hey, Chibo, I just watched a video about, uh, you know, yin deficiency causing uh, cold hands and feet. So how does that work, right? Because uh, yin deficiency is usually heat. Uh, Chibo will be able to find the unique elements of the differential diagnosis through the classics and explain that to them. So these are some unique tools that we're creating for our community. Edpuzzle that I mentioned already allows all, all of our teachers, all of our professors will have full access to it, free training available for all of you through our support staff. Easily, easily through a one-click record or upload your videos. Provide, uh, we will provide you a template for Google Slides if you want to use our existing template. If you have a pre-recorded video or a pre-recorded slide, or if you have slides already made up, you can you literally, literally just use those slides. We only ask that you put one small section that fits into the EIHS uh, uh, bracket that our students can know that this is coming in from the EIHS classroom. Ease of use, assign the lesson series uh, to the class and with integrated uh, 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 quizzes and uh, tests within the uh, video programs itself. And as I said, you have full access to your videos and can use them at your leisure. You're logging in, you're creating this virtual library, you can do whatever you want. You can completely lock it down and you can open it only to the uh, um, students that are uh, that are in your class um, or you can use it to administer to others. If you have other students, personal students you want to share the videos with, you can. You have no problems to do that. They must, again, be able to log in to, uh, uh, to Edpuzzle, which has a login for the student end and they will need to have access to that as well. You retain full IP of your content. We don't want your content. That's your magic. That's your story. That's your passion. You keep it. We just ask a non-exclusive right to use that video for our uh, educational purposes. And we compensate in a unique way because this is different than the classic model of, okay, I go at, I report at eight o'clock and I teach for four hours. Now pay me per hour of the teaching that I've done and I'm done because you're putting these efforts into it and you're going to be using these videos later on, whether you're teaching that lesson or not. We will compensate you fully hourly for every recording that you do, for every hour of recording that you do, plus any of the actual didactic synchronous lessons that you'll be performing. In addition, every semester subsequently that these videos are played, whether you're teaching them as well or not, you get a royalty payment. You don't need to worry about uh, uh, new lectures or conducting the same lesson over and over and over again. You just simply run that campaign and say, OK, it's second semester, new cohort coming in. They need to go through a and P1. I already have all the videos. Here's your 20 hour videos. Go watch it. I can sit back and just conduct my 10 hour of uh, or five hours of uh, uh, synchronous lessons for which I get paid full one on an hourly basis. Plus, I get a royalty fee for all of the hours for every hour that that video is being watched. So that gives you the ability to have residual income on a quite a, a large basis. And as we grow, I anticipate our students, our, our teachers, our professors being able to sit back and if you have uh, five or six videos that are being constantly, or modules that are being constantly played every semester, you could at any point in time earn a nice chunk of residual income without having to work. Meaning without having to get in front of a classroom and conduct five hours of lectures or 10 hours of lectures or 20 hours of lectures, because you've already done it. Why not be effective? Why not be efficient, right, at this? Now, about the Senate, the reason why we're trying to create the Senate is so that you can feel as a group, 
that you have access to us and you have rights. You as a Senate will have a voice in our, as Georgette said, in our the collective decisions. We as an institution want to become more than just a, you know, a run of the mill college that teaches TCM because we're actively involved in philanthropy, because we're actively involved in research, in education, in setting the trends for the next revolution of education. We want your input. We would like this Senate collectively to have a vote in academic decisions in the Institute's direction. And as such, my suggestion to you as a collective is, and I'll be more than happy to assist in chairing that initial meeting or arranging whatever meetings are required, but I need you to elect a president. Come up with one individual who will represent the, the, um, the academic Senate, who will be much more actively involved in the board, with the board, with the uh, uh, AIHS, and will be compensated additionally because you're representing a voice. You're representing a voting voice in decision-making in the academic Senate. Now, our compensation plan, as I said, we have a flat hourly rate for all the recordings and live virtual classes. So if you have a situation where you're doing a 20 hour video, the 20 hours plus the five hours is compensated at a flat hourly rate. I don't discuss the hourly rates here because these will be discussed individually with each individual when we discuss your own contract as you uh, begin the actual lecture recordings. In addition, you get royalty compensation for each of these recorded videos. So if you've done your first semester, you get full pay. Second semester, you're working on another module, you get full pay for that. And you get your residual uh, um, uh, royalty for the module that you've already done that's being used to teach, whether you're teaching it or someone else. Preferably you. I don't want other people to teach your videos. I want you to continue your own passion, your own story, right? You created that message. You created these videos. You created these presentations. And therefore, you're the only one that knows the, the gist of those messages and the, and, and, the, and the passion with which you can present that. When we have our, our uh, monthly, um, uh, twice a year monthly meetings here, the hands-on, if any of you, if any of our instructors decide that we want to be part of that, we want to participate, and we can make arrangements to host you, room and board will be provided for you during that time. That is our uh, 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 access to you. In addition, any CEU programs that is being offered through the uh, program, if you wish to participate in them, you get 50% discount on those. And opportunity for you to offer free your own CEU programs through the Institute. So if you have a CEU program that is unique to you and you want to promote it and carry it out, conduct it through and offer it through the Institute, through our marketing campaigns, through our channels, through our large network, you're more than welcome to use our uh, network to promote and to conduct your uh, CEU classes through the channel. So these are the compensation plans. Now, what we're looking for for this fall instruction set we have, as I said, majority of the, the, the videos already or the class materials has been designed. These modules have been designed completely, but we do have a few things that we're looking help on. So you can see, you know, from biomedical sciences, we are looking for someone to teach neuroscience, psychology. The research methodology, I think we have someone already pegged, but neuroscience and psychology are two areas where we could use help. If you have the ability, the wherewithal, and the interest to teach those modules, please uh, uh, reach out to one of us and let us know. We do need Neijing and Shanghan, and I would love, absolutely love, Dr. Yuang Li, if you're listening, I would love for you to do Shanghan Lun or one of those, uh, Wei, Pi Wei Lun, Shanghan Lun, or uh, Wen Bing. So any one of those would be would be great, right? So, um, Shanghan, Neijing, differential diagnosis one, we're looking for someone who can begin the theoretics of TCM diagnosis, differential diagnosis, understanding the concept of differential diagnosis and TCM theory. And then we have microsystems. This is auricular and uh, Korean hand microsystems. Point prescriptions using the classic point prescriptions. Channel palpation, 
Channel palpation literally is the, uh, the, the classic channel palpation system. Needling techniques, I think, Ben, uh, we had someone that was going to be doing needling techniques. Uh, one, of, one of you already has expressed interest. And uh, I think point location five was already uh, covered as well. So these are the primary lessons that we're looking at. Mostly neuroscience, psychology, Maging, differential diagnosis, Shanghan Lun, uh, TCM theory, internal medicine, a lot, a lot more in the TCM core uh, systems as well. And then we have uh, some in acupuncture channel as well. Herbology, I think we have covered quite well. So these are the key areas that we're looking for. If you do see any of these, that interest you, please reach out to one of us and we can uh, conduct uh, further discussions ab about that. And at this point, what I'd like to do is stop the presentation and begin an open session discussion. First of all, again, thank you very much for bearing with me on a Saturday evening, uh, well, Saturday morning for some of you, uh, for over an hour and a half or an hour and 20 minutes. So it was a little bit of a long presentation. I do, uh, I do apologize. I do they, they tend to get passionate about things. But do you have any questions? Does anyone have any specific questions, comments, uh, elucidations, observations? I was either really good or really bad. That's that's usually what happens when you have no questions. You're either really good or really bad. So which one is it? Tell me. <laughs> Very simple question. Are you going to give us the slides of this presentation so that we can think about it? Um, you can create your own. Most of the most of the materials, like for example, let's say we're doing Shanghan Lun. Most of the material we expect the instructors to create those. That's why you're the genius no, no, for no. that. Sorry, um, I was asking about this presentation of the school. Oh yeah, the, absolutely. You this did the, now. Yeah, 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 absolutely. This presentation, the slides, and also the recording will be available to you for you to watch, for you to uh, to have access to. If you have other colleagues who are interested, you can share that with them. So yes, it will be emailed out to this list uh, subsequently. Uh, Doctor, I also have one question. Thank you for your presentation. But I would like to know something related to the syllabus or curriculum. Uh, are you going to send us something or we are we should prepare something or we need to discuss concerning that? This is this is a very important question, a very powerful question. Remember that a lot of the classic education model was derived on syllabus. And a syllabus was a tool by which you calculated how many hours you need for this subject and for that subject and for that subject. We are moving away from that into a core competencies-based system. Therefore, you as an instructor will design the core competencies that you're going to be doing, which includes the learning objectives, which is basically the syllabus, learning objectives, what materials you're gonna use and what topics you're gonna to cover. And what are the, uh, the, the, uh, the end results? What is the student outcomes? What are the outcomes that you're expecting, right? From the class, because you know your material best. I don't wanna dictate that to you. I want you to put that together because all I'm interested in is core competencies. For example, if I'm dealing with someone who is going to be, in your case, for example, let's say understanding the, the progression of disease in, 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 in the population, what is it that I want the student to get at the end? What are the core competencies? You know best than I do. And I'm not yes, going to sit here and dictate sure, that. For here. sure, but uh, uh, the discipline should be the same. But uh, because of the specialization, different subject topics could be. And because of that, uh, maybe we need to discuss or what? Your, yes, discuss. every time we have a class that's being taught, it's a it's a process by which you will be discussing with the board and with the with our with our with our instructors and also our support staff about what materials you need, what subjects you're going to cover, what tools you're going to need, you know, what 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 kind of uh, technology you're going to need to have access, et cetera. All of that will be covered in before you begin the actual process of conducting the, the, the instructions. Hi, Dr. Ely. Welcome back. I'm so glad you're back. I am begging you, if you can do Shanghan Lun, you will make my day. She is brilliant at Shanghan Lun. She knows Shanghan Lun like no one else knows Shanghan Lun. You, you're on mute. You're on mute. Please unmute yourself. Uh, Dr. Lee, you're on mute. <laughs> I said it. Shanghai is my favorite. Yes, yes, I know. And I would love for you to teach Shanghai. 
If you okay. if you ramp off, oh, yes. All right, that's great. <laughs> that's phenomenal. That's excellent. Great, 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 I'm great. Sorry, great. you know, I'm kind of have to yell out it because it's super busy today. <laughs> I know, I know, but but I am so uh, humbled and honored that you actually took the time to to participate. Thank you, thank you very much. Of course. <laughs> thank you. you. Anyone else have any other questions or comments or observations? Okay. Again, I want to reach out to every single one of you that took the time to participate. I am humbled by your presence. I am honored to have all of you here. And I am looking forward to, with your help and with your participation, to creating something unique, something that is transcendent beyond just, a, oh, it's just another college, it's just another institute, it's just another school. I want to create a global community that is active philanthropically, creates unique students, graduates that will go out and present our heritage, a rich heritage of medicine and philosophy, and 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 history that and and then make us proud because they're going to be working in integrated hospitals they're going to be working hand in hand with mds and surgeons and and urologists and i want them to be able to be confident enough that they can talk to these people and articulate with them as peers not as subordinates you know i remember when i graduated the first thing i did was I walked into a uh, integrated clinic and I said, I'm an acupuncturist and I'm here to help you. And they laughed at me because I could not articulate what is yin and yang and tai chi Fu and what am I doing with these needle points when I'm moving chi and blood. That doesn't translate into Western medicine. So guess what I did? I ended up biting my nails and went and got an MD. So that you talk to them in their own tongue. <laughs> so now I'm a medical doctor, so they can't not listen to me now. Anyway, but I want to again thank everyone that came here. If you have further questions, reach out to us, and myself, um, our, our admin staff, Armine, or Benjamin, or Georgette, or even Allison. And we really look forward to working with each one of you to make this happen. Thank you again for your participation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.